Welcome folks, welcome to Rocky's Tool School. This video series will be all about tools. We'll be starting with hand tools, working our way up to uh, automotive tools, tools for around your house, fixing your home, fixing your car. And what you see before you is some magic video work. This is so you don't forget about this introductory video that I'm going to be showing you today. I'll be showing you a few basic uh, hand tools to start things off. Uh, then I'll get in uh, the fu uh, future videos as we roll along. I'll be uh, going into more detail about how each tool is used and maybe some sample work that we'll be doing with them. So hopefully, pull up a chair, relax, get comfortable, and uh, we'll get on with the show. Okay, here we go. What you see spinning in front of you, uh, stop spinning, would you? I think it's time I put you to sleep. There's a pair of... Um, vice grips and it's basically uh, a locking plier. It's got a, a lever action here that multiplies the force in order to grab on to, uh, oh you might have rusted nuts or bolts or whatever, something that you normally couldn't use a wrench for. Now it's got its little guy here too, it's, uh, it's baby if you will. They come in different sizes. As you can see there, uh, the more force you need and the bigger the job, the bigger pair of ice grips you're going to need. They call them uh, locking pliers too. They're, they come under different names. Uh, people call them different things. Don't worry about it, just as long as you know what we're talking about. Um, then there's a smaller one, like I say, for um, smaller jobs. Uh, you could use them for automotives, could use them around the house, just about anything you can think of that needs to be grabbed on in a temporary basis. It's an additional force. All right, let's put that aside for now. And we can work up to a few different things that we have here. I have to move around to get these things, so that's why my voice kind of disappears from time to time, so bear with me. Here I have, um, it actually came in a plastic pouch. They're a bunch of little, what they call needle files. You use them for smaller jobs. You can use them on metal or, or on uh, wood. And then here's your typical uh, flat file. This one's a double cut, more for roughing. It's got uh, two serrations on angles here. For rough uh, filing, it gets the material down quicker, and then you'd use a single cut file for uh, more smooth uh, finishing work. Okay, there's a, a bunch of files. This wooden base here was just a scrap I had from a little hobby part I made and so I drilled some holes in it and made a file stand. Just have to remember not to, to lean over without safety glasses because you don't want to be uh, poking yourself with this if you lean over to reach something. So be very careful with sharp objects. You don't want to see anybody getting hurt because of these videos. So that's why I'm going to explain a few safety tips as we roll along here. Okay, what we have here, uh, look like a spatula, right? You can uh, use these things. Um, actually, the most common words that uh, you hear these referred to being called are called putty knives. Um, you can use them for drywall, patching your wall, and uh, the bigger ones. I've even got bigger ones if you're doing like... Uh, drywall from new where you have the full sheets of drywall and the joints to fill with and I can even show you that later on as we go. But there's two different ones, different widths for different jobs. And they come bigger, they come smaller. Okay, we're doing the twin thing today for the most part. And then we can get on uh, <clears throat> a little later I'll be showing you how to cut tubing, copper tubing, steel tubing. These are the most commonly used ones. There's a big one and a little one and they use them for um, cutting uh, plumbing pipe like copper pipe. These ones will cut, uh, well the small one will do right down to small stuff for automotive work, uh, brake lines or whatever, you can eat, cut steel with it. Uh, never use copper on your brake lines, I always use steel for an automotive um, application. But for the house you use copper, that's if you're not using the newer plastic stuff they have out there, but there's two different sizes for different uh, outside diameters of pipe. And all you do is you turn those and crank the handle down as you're turning and it cuts a little deeper. There's a little a little wheel here with a sharp edge on it, much like a can opener. And uh, you just keep going around and finally that piece of pipe falls off. The part that you don't want. And then we can get into sanding blocks. We have here um, a commercially made one. It's uh, kind of a, a medium density rubber. A little on the hard side actually. Uh, you can use this for automotive uh, um, body work. Uh, you put a coarser piece of sandpaper in here. It just got, it has some little teeth in here and you open this thing up and then you just poke the sandpaper in there and press it down and there's some teeth that grab, go right through the sandpaper and grab it. 
and then you just uh, do the same thing to the other end to uh, secure it into the block. It fits the hand really good. I've also got a smaller one of these for um, contour work and stuff, for doing body work, but you can use these, these ones here. I bought it originally for doing drywall work in the house. Um, you can put different, like I say, you can put different grits of sandpaper. Start coarse if you want to rough something down quick, and then if you want to smooth out like body work, you can get right down into the finer grits of sandpaper and make for a smooth finishing job. And uh, if you don't have a small commercial made one, this is just a piece of... Uh, scrap lumber I had kicking around, probably cut it to length and just got a staple gun and stapled on a piece of uh, sandpaper so I can get into corners. This one, why you see it's not on the corner here and uh, all the way around, it was for doing corner work, probably uh, where the drywall meets the corner in the ceiling or else in the wall, two walls uh, butting up against each other. So you can put different you can grab any shape of wood or whatever you got and just staple a piece of sandpaper in it, pull it tight, staple it and You've got a really cheap way of doing uh, sanding work without wearing your hands out. You just hang on to this whichever way is comfortable. You can hold it on the end if you make it the right size and work it like that. So there's all I'll say for sanding and we'll work on uh, getting some more stuff up to you. Okay then, we have some pliers. I'm doing the big one, little one today. These ones uh, commonly referred to channel lock pliers or water pump pliers if you're into automotives at all. The old school name was water pump pliers, uh, or uh, professional name if you will, channel lock pliers. They have channels here, and all you do is you open the, the pliers up, and you can slide these things and get it to the size that you want. You've got a big piece of pipe or something big that you have to clamp on, you can clamp on metal with these, or wood, plastic if it's strong enough to support it. But if you want to go smaller, you just basically uh, open them up, slide them to this, <coughs> excuse me, the um, position that you want them, try them, see if they're going to fit. There's uh, serrations in here to grab uh, things like pipe and whatnot so it doesn't slip if you're trying to turn a nut or a bolt on the other end, right? So there you have that, that's a large one, and then you get right down into what they call needle nose pliers. They make them in different sizes, uh, different lengths, and they're, they're for smaller work where you have to get into something where there's not a lot of access area. Not too heavy duty a job for this pair, but they've seen a lot. They're also combined, combined rather, with um, little cutting teeth in here. Little edges in here you can put uh, oh, softer wire or whatnot, um, copper wire for, uh, oh, say, uh, house electrical wiring or, or small bits of uh, soft wire that you use them to tie something up. Uh, many purposes and uses for these things, so I've used them for just about anything you can think of and I'll be explaining a few of those tricks and tips as we go along once we get uh, some sample work to show you on this little workbench I have going here. Alright, then we have um, we have big and little tape measures. This is your standard household one. Uh, this one does about oh, 16 feet I think it'll pull out. It's uh, it just you take what you need and you can lock it up. There's a little thumb lock there and it'll hold without going back in. And when you're done with whatever uh, you're measuring, you, you just uh, loosen the lock there and it automatically goes in. It's the tape has got a curve to it and it's designed so it's uh, it'll pull itself back into the uh, the housing here. Um, another thing too, it's got a belt clip on it here or on your blue jeans or whatever, you can just hook on there on your hip or somewhere it's not going to get snagged on something while you're working. Uh, member safety, you don't want to have it dropping on somebody's head if you're up a ladder or whatever. So uh, there's the one that'll do about 16 feet. That's uh, just an example that I have laying around here. And they do make other ones if you're outside uh, measuring up for, uh, well I don't know if you're going to measure the long side of your house or the length of your car, but this one will go to 100 feet. That's about, oh, I don't know, 30 odd meters if you're doing the metric system, but it just pulls out. But this one is quite flexible, and um, it doesn't come in into its own housing like this one. It's got a little hand crank on the side here. And all you do is, yeah, this, you just, just like fishing, you just wind it all back up in there like so. And then to keep that from floating around, it actually, it actually locks right in there. It just snaps in there out of harm's way. So there's the, the long and the short, not necessarily the bigger and little. Then we can work on uh, screwdrivers, some samples you might have seen in my videos before. 
working on carburetors and whatnot. Uh, longer ones, uh, more uh, heavy duty looking things for bigger jobs. And then you got short stubby ones for um, places where you don't want to, uh, or if you have trouble with access and it's in a tighter area. Uh, some of the house electrical work, you'll get into little, little um, areas or little areas in your vehicle where you have to have a shorter one. This thing will bang into some parts or what have you and uh, you just can't get s straight on that screw. You'd be up on an angle and the screw needs to be going in this direction. Well, it's no good, right? So you use the tool that best applies. For that matter, um, one that you have in your possession, one that you own or borrow, get the best one to suit the job if at all possible. Then uh, we'll be doing a little later on when we get into the power tool section of this video series. As you can see there, we've got uh, big drills and little drills. This one is about a half inch diameter. And if you notice on the bottom here, where it uh, plugs into the drill chuck to secure it into the electric hand drill, it's actually turned down. See a half inch, uh, most uh, hand drills, I have the uh, powered one that uh, uses house electricity with a regular plug. I don't use the battery operated one. So even so, the chuck capacity is only about three eighths of an inch. So this set of drills that I have are all stepped down. The ones that get over three eighths of an inch in diameter, they're actually machine down so that I can use a bigger drill in my uh, electric hand drill. So that's a half inch drill going into a 3 8 inch chuck. This one is about oh, 5 30 seconds of an inch and uh, it's just a sample I got here. Found a nice silver one so it would show up being so small. So they're actually called twist drills and uh, I'll get into more detail about these as uh, the video that uh, I do for this particular, um, in this case it would be drilling. Okay, and I'll show you some tips and tricks, different materials, and uh, what to watch for, and how to maybe even sharpen them. Okay, then we uh, move on to the clamps. We got big ones and little ones. This one's commonly referred to as a as a C clamp, the letter C. This is a larger one I bought for uh, for compressing the piston in a disc brake caliper on a big Chevy van. Yeah, so just a cheap one under. I think it was under ten dollars but uh, I've actually taken a little clamp foot off of here for a different application so there's different ways you can modify your tools if need be to do a, a certain application that you're working on but all they do is there's just the handle in here you can put it out of the way or if, if you're having trouble bumping into it you can just move it back and give it another bit of a turn all right this one is a six inch it'll uh, the screw will back all the way out of the threaded portion in the actual uh, C part of the clamp. So this screw comes all the way back and you can put something that's six inches um, well if you're say compressing some wood or something that you're gluing together for instance um, you can back this all the way out and then put uh, a couple of big uh, three inch uh, or a stack of uh, lumber with glue or whatever you want to, to glue while the glue sets. You can compress it with this clamp and hold it overnight until the glue dries. And also I made this one, oh I forget where I made it but it's just a smaller one. It was a shop project, and everybody kind of made one, and uh, it's just made out of common steel. Uh, it's it's very good to uh, to learn these things as you go along. Um, you learn all about threads, how they're cut. Um, this is a miniature. I've used it so much on smaller parts, um, holding things, and actually there's some welding splatter on here too. It was actually used to hold some metal parts together while it was being arc welded. So there's all kinds of uses for clamps. You can use them for wood, metal, whatever whatever the job requires, and it's not going to cause any problems. So there's clamps. And then we can move on to a, a couple of wrenches. <coughs> Excuse me again. I don't know what's with my throat, but it, every time I video it seems to go dry and cracks or whatever. So we have some uh, what they're commonly referred to as, uh, as crescent wrenches. And this one is a it's a 15 inch and uh, all you do is you turn the thumb wheel here and um, you can do adjust that to accommodate the size of the uh, the head on the nut or bolt that you want to turn or anything that's not round it has to have um, <clears throat> a couple of opposing flats on it much like a nut or a bolt so if you really need to start wrenching on something there you have it right there 15 inch they make them bigger and as you can see here they make them much smaller too. This one here is uh, 
I don't know, it's about six inches. Yeah, six inch one. And uh, same thing, thumb wheel here. You can use it with one hand. You, the only thing is they're not very, as far as the application, it's not very professional to use these. This is more like, like a household thing or a car nut or bolt that's not too fussy. You really want to use proper wrenches on uh, automotive work. But for around the house or if you don't want to go out and buy a set of metric and standard inch wrenches, then this is the way to go if you're not doing anything like uh, head bolts or uh, a job that requires you to use the proper tool. So there's a couple of things. It could be called adjustable wrenches, but most commonly the old days, uh, I believe it was the Crescent uh, Tool tool and Horseshoe Company, if I remember rightly. Uh, I remember seeing that on one of them somewhere, but there's there's the two comparisons there, the, the two sizes of head on there. Okay, so moving right along. I guess we can finish up with uh, a couple more here. Uh, this is a common one. This one here is... Uh, a combination uh, level uh, square and it even has a 45 degree head on it as well so if you're marking um, oh, I don't know you can use it with a pencil and mark uh, cut off you know if you want to cut a square end off a piece of 2 by 12 or something you can put a reference line there this this thing has actually got a nut on it, it should have a thumb thumb nut on there but uh, I think that was lost so I ended up putting a, a brass nut on there just a pair of pliers or a wrench and you can slide <coughs> excuse me, this head along anywhere on this scale here. It's about one foot long, 12 inches. And so you can stand the thing up on something and you can mark a, a line vertically anywhere you like. But it'll do square. It'll do square here or it'll do the 45. As in right there. And uh, you can slide it along. <clears throat> you can use it actually for a rough measuring tool. You can slide this along to the graduation in inches that you want to set something for. Say if you wanted to describe a line down a piece of 2x6 or something, set it for 2 or 3 inches, whatever the job calls for. You just put your pencil in there and then pull this whole thing along as this, this part, this, this head here is rubbing against the edge of the 2x6. I hope I said 2x6 in the beginning there. So there's all kinds of uses for these things. I'll get more specific as uh, I actually tackle each and every tool that I'm, I've got in my custody here and uh, give you a heads up on, uh, on how things uh, can be measured and uh, made for the most part. Alright, for the... I think I got everything that I'm going to show you today. Grand finale, we'll do a little bit of um, precision measuring. These are an older set of vernier calipers. They, they're good for 8 inch uh, length or diameter. Uh, they do, I'll get into more particulars with that. These ones are graduated in the Imperial inch system, or the American inch system, same difference. Uh, Canada went metric in 1977, so this is, uh, you'd have to do a conversion if you get something metric, or if you have a, an imported car, they're all metric to start with anyways. But if you have something from, a, from the United States of America, they're still in the inch system, and that's what we used to be in. Um, so I'll show you how to use those, and different applications. Automotive work more or less. You don't really use these too much around a house unless you know you want to measure a drill or something. And then finally I'll, I'll end with this. This is something I picked up, believe it or not, many years ago for two dollars and fifty cents. It's for metal working. It's a protractor and it's got oh, about a six inch scale on it. And you can just go ahead and if you have something angular, could even be in wood. I've used it on everything. Wood, plastic, metal, and it's a measuring device or a layout device if you uh, if you want to scribe lines on some metal or use it with a pencil. But you can set this anywhere you like. It's got a locking screw with the thumb and forefinger here. And it goes from uh, 0 on that side up to 90 and then to 180 and then the scale reverses and then it goes the other way too so you can read them in either, either direction that you like. But I think that was a bargain at $2.50. Some guy came into the school and he laid all his stuff out on much what looked like a ping pong table at the time. And uh, I guess he must have imported a lot of this stuff. This one is made in Japan. It's actually quite good quality for what, it, for what I paid for it. And I got plenty of use out of this. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave you with uh, what I was just telling you there on this introductory video for uh, Rocky's Tool School. You can find uh, the rest of these videos uh, if you want to watch the, the complete series once I, I get rolling along on these things. And um, 
Well, actually, did I show you the hammers yet? It's time for a hammer or two. Here's your your common cheap household one. It's just tubular steel here, and it's called a claw hammer. And uh, you use that. You got a nail in there, and you want to remove the, the nail. You manage to get that underneath the head like that, and then you just pull on it. And I'll even show you some lever advantages and different things to do in order to make it easier for you to pull those nails because you can only go so far with the bigger nails and then you have to do some work some uh, oh what do you say jack of all trades uh, modifications and additions in order to help you out speed things up make it easier so that's your, your typical around the house claw hammer so if anybody says hey you got a claw hammer you'll know exactly what they look like and uh, you'll be able to respond to them now okay let's let's end this thing with this this monster if I hadn't already shown you that I bought this for automotive work. I had to do some, uh, uh, get some suspension parts. Uh, it goes in combination with another tool, commonly called a pickle fork, and I had to separate some, some tie rod ends from the steering linkage in a mid '90s uh, General Motors minivan. So I went out, went to the, the discount store, and picked this thing up for like I don't know, it was less than 15 bucks at the time. But I think that's about a three-pound head on there. No, actually it's got it in there. It's a four pound head on the end of this hammer. That, that solid steel, uh, heat treated, it's a little bit tougher than the soft steel. But uh, this thing is four, four pounds on the end, so when you get swinging this thing, there's a lot of force and impact when you hit this. Once you get the head speed up and it hits something, you, you don't want to have your hand under that by any means. You'll squish it big time. I can barely lift this thing. Well, I can lift it, but I'll just make it sound heavier than it really is. So that's four pounds on the end, right? Almost uh, two kilograms if you're in uh, Europe or wherever you are in the world that uses the metric system. So that's that's my big ugly, if you will. And I don't use it all that often, but, um, you know, when uh, I needed it to, uh, to really add some force to get those uh, tie rod ends separated from the rest of the steering linkage, it, uh, it, showed, uh, it showed that steering linkage who was boss all right. So there's, uh, I shall leave that there as we uh, wind down here. Okay, so now with all that said, um, when I get time I'll start adding videos to this series. So just look for Rocky's Tool School. Uh, the name of my channel is Rocky's Roadshow. No spaces, uh, no special uh, asterisks or anything, no quotation marks, just Rocky's Roadshow. That's simple enough, and uh, you should be able to learn. I'm going to try to do this as simple as I can. I'm actually not a bad teacher when it comes down to more simple things. In the way that I teach, I use a simple method. I don't really try to make like Mr. Professor here. You'll get these guys that, you know, they talk, but they're using words that are just too big for you and I. So we'll keep it simple. We'll keep it fun, as fun as I possibly can. And... Uh, I'll mention some safety tips and try to remember to always put your safety glasses on. Um, really, really um, protect your eyes because when you think things are safe, you can go along so far and then all of a sudden when you least expect it, boom, some little part or something goes flying and it might hit your eye, lose your eyesight. really don't want that. Okay, folks, take care. Have yourself a nice day and bye for now.